In middle school, I began to explore graphic novels as a form of entertainment because I needed to identify with something. Just like how anime and otoboku helped me come to terms with myself, so too did graphic novels during this critical point of development. However, when I brought them into the classroom for any form of independent reading, I was usually met with, this is not literature. You'll learn nothing reading this. Choose something else to read. You can't imagine my shock when hearing this, as I thought teachers were more lenient on this topic. The teachers usually had graphic novels in their classroom, yet they seemed to always guide me to those other books that would educate me. While I'd want to explore the concepts of literature as a genre, I'm going to spend my time on graphic novels as a form of learning, because they can teach people valuable lessons. Just like Mike Newman's series of lessons animation taught us, there exist lessons graphic novels taught us. Wow, a beautiful transition cut short by clarifications. This is a grade A YouTuber. This isn't a personal video, but rather one that explores using graphic novels in the classroom, particularly on how it teaches students about literacy regarding dialogue. What better way to explore this than Yoshitoki Oima's story of a bully and a deaf girl, a silent voice, as our exemplar. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's continue on with the video. Graphic novels, also known as comic books, are a form of entertainment for people. One of the most notable features of graphic novels is its visuals that can draw viewers' attention. Flashy costumes with fluorescent colors or grungy environments with a reliance on monochrome can appeal to many readers. While reading images to understand the fine details can be beneficial, the words on the page inform the reader of several factors including ideas, motivation, personality, plot, themes, and a myriad more. These are key aspects in literature, yet educators still exist who do not view graphic novels as literature and think it doesn't help students learn, but is in fact detrimental to them. This idea that comic books are bad increased in popularity when Frederick Wortham's 1954 novel, Seduction of the Innocent, hit store shelves where he claims that comic books were destroying American morale and leading to juvenile delinquency because comic books covered very mature topics and 90% of vigilantes read violent comic books. To his credit, many crime comics from this era exist which mirror many TV lineups on broadcast networks today with plenty of sexualizing traits of both men and women. Wortham's concern was on the child's brain as he deeply cared for children especially since he is a pioneer of brain development research, which supported the notion that separate but not equal is inherently unequal in Brown v. Board of Education because his research found segregating students is more damaging to the brain than originally thought. While his heart was in the right place, his mind sure wasn't. His research is muddled with correlations. If we return to that 90% figure, he correlated that comics led to violence Thus, violent comics turn readers to use violent actions they saw in the comics. However, that doesn't mean that is the case. It could be that violent readers are attracted to violent comics, thus the violence is on the onus of the individual and not the material. Plus, it was already targeting a group of violent people and not accounting for those who were already non-violent. These findings plagued the landscape for comics and graphic novels for decades, which remains even present today and now it passes on the torch to the violent video games leads to violence movement. And I want to focus on the aspect that uses words to create this notion, the character's dialogue. This can seem inadequate as graphic novels are light on words in comparison to other literature. This can seem bad at a first glance, but it can help students focus on the words rather than gloss over them. When reading a novel or chapter book, the reader will easily glide over the words to obtain information. The brain will process the information, but it can be somewhat taxing to them. However, for graphic novels, the text is in speech bubbles to draw the reader's focus as they can sort of disrupt the page. There are multiple types of speech balloons, which can align a prosody to communicate with emotion and rhythm, such as the regular balloon for conversation, boxes to communicate in their monologue, bubbly balloons for energetic speech, 
pointed balloons for screaming or yelling, dashed balloons for whispers, and thought bubbles to display the thoughts of the characters. Then the speech bubbles are in its own panel, separated by the gutter, reinforcing the idea to pay attention more closely by giving time to comprehend its message. Just like how there are long pauses between character dialogue in edutainment shows, the breaks between the panels give students ample time to process before moving on to the next panel or page. Similarly, the gutters can help create a discussion with students by examining the character's words by having this break, rather than stopping midway through a novel, as a thick line signify each panel as its own separate story. This is a key aspect of learning literacy, as the students need to be active readers engaging with the material and practicing it in oscillation. By drawing attention to the words by restating them each time in the classroom help build up the usage of those words in the student's mind and understand the context of the words because of the illustrations. Even with the low amount of words on the page, the usage of words repeatedly helps students build connections to the words from the text. As a result, if third grade students or higher read a comic a day, they'll take in over 500,000 words per year overall. Not new words though. I feel I need to stress that the author considers a comic to be roughly 24 pages, so one chapter in a graphic novel, if available, will count as a comic. From my understanding, she multiplied the average word count per page by the average number of pages by one year, or 365 days. Although the repetition of sight words commonly found in graphic novels can be fostering literacy development, graphic novels often contain more advanced vocabulary that appear multiple times in the work. This can help with building decoding and comprehension strategies to form connections between the words and illustrations and delving into the literary devices used within the graphic novels. This is a feature special to graphic novels as the world becomes more technologically advanced, students will engage with interactive media that connects prose literacy with visual literacy, such as with user interfaces on websites and video games. Integrating graphic novels into the classroom can be beneficial for students because the dialogue on the page contributes to literacy development. Something that needs consideration is when selecting graphic novels to use in the classroom, the books should represent your classroom. While there exists a plethora of graphic novels of classic literature, such as A Wrinkle in Time and Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, the book should represent the students not only by appearance and culture, but in dialogue as well. Up until more recently, comics contained hyper-masculine and hyper-feminine character designs, which can cause body issues for both boys and girls by having over-exaggerated features that can be unattainable at their age. Characters should reflect them in appearance, which is why many characters exist with different body sizes and from different cultures where they can be unique from one another. Similarly, the way the characters speak is important as dialogue can reflect normal conversation in a sense. If a character speaks in old-fashioned English in present day, it would appear out of place, unless it was during a play or something. Speech needs evaluation to determine if it is similar to the era students are currently in. There will be a time for the classics and historical works, but for students to enjoy reading, they need to see themselves and relate to the characters, relate to the dialogue on the essence of what the story is saying and showing, such as in a silent voice, showing how to communicate with others in different ways, or Kate O'Neill's Aquacorn Cave on dealing with single-parent homes and parents that aren't present at home, or Molly Ostertag's Witch Boy discussing puberty and gender roles. Many graphic novels exist that speak about different issues or tell compelling stories. Whether it be novels, comics, manga, or something else, there is something for everyone. It isn't merely about having graphic novels in the classroom but using them in lessons that encourage students to read them. And then they can begin learning about literacy by creating a dialogue between the story they are reading and their own personal story. Hi everyone, welcome to the end card of this video. So I plan on using this as my final project in one of my courses that I'm taking. So hopefully people enjoy it. Otherwise, I'm going to be gravely guilty and conscious heavy about my work.
that's always fun anyway uh, I truly do care about education and I do think that integrating other aspects that aren't commonly found within education are a yeah my throat is dry I need water um, is a benefit to uh, the field as a whole because it provides new insights and at least applies to the students in some way so if you want me to explore this topic of graphic novels further I did leave some leeway regarding literary devices and stuff leave a comment down below and I will definitely research more into that topic and prepare one soon um, otherwise uh, if you have any comments or criticisms about this video, whether it be my editing, my writing, or something else that might be different, maybe even my microphone, because I noticed while streaming it was going off the wire, uh, please leave that down below and I will definitely try to fix or make any sort of arrangements to amend those issues. Um, I truly do believe in healthy criticism. so. Don't be afraid to even say your meanest things. Uh, now, my next video will be next week. Um, so I hope you look forward to that because it's a very special day. And then I will see you in the next one. So thank you once again for watching and have a wonderful day.